What's up guys, welcome back to The Home Slice. Today I'm gonna make good on a promise that I would teach you guys how to recreate the edge that I put on the mule, which I sent to Pete at Cedric and Ada, the CPM Magna Cut Mule. That particular blade cut 1,550 times through the sisal rope, as I've been corrected by my viewers to pronounce it. Uh, thanks for that. And I'm going to show you just exactly how I did that and this will also function as a sort of update to my current normal dual grip method. It's worth noting that I've just discovered that if you swap out a spider coat or other fine ceramic for the water stone, it seems to have an effect of increased lasting aggression but decreased smoothness. So you could alternatively try that. I know for sure the ceramic works good on soft steels. I've done it on Victorinox so far. I've not tested it on harder steels. It's also worth noting that this edge works on almost all steels I've tested, but up over 65 Rockwell, like with Maximet, I've had deburring problems where the whole burr is just broken off and left a quite a wide edge and it hasn't worked well for Maximet. I've also had some difficulty with steels where the carbides can sometimes be a little more clumped like um, S30V I've had difficulty. You can get a dual grit edge on S30V for sure but it does require maybe a little bit more care. High toughness steels like Magna Cut, Nitro, V, uh, most of your carbon steels will take a dual grit edge beautifully. Also your M4s and steels like that will take a really beautiful dual grit edge. So first off, let's get into the supplies that you will need to pull off this sharpening job. If you are going to do it on Magna Cut, which is the steel that delivered that performance, then you need a knife in Magna Cut. I don't presently have that mule that I sharpened because Pete's still got it and he was using my mules for some other testing and he's going to send them back soon, but this is a Hogue Deca. This is probably about two Rockwell softer than what the knife is that I sent to Pete, but it will still sharpen up with this method admirably and deliver a very incredible result. I have not measured the difference between 61 Rockwell and 63 Rockwell, but it should be noted that if you want the exact same performance, you probably need a Spyderco mule, but you'll get close to it with, with any Magna Cut, in my experience and in my opinion. The next thing that you need is a coarse diamond stone of some kind. I'm not aware that it matters whether it's a DMT or a Chinese cheap one. Well, this is an easy lap, 250 grit. I hear people in the comments have experienced good results anywhere from 200 or 220 grit all the way up to 600 grit. Probably the coarser you go, the more aggression you're going to have and the finer they are probably will result in increased smoothness in your dual grit edge, but it could potentially uh, result in less aggression. You'll also need a water stone. Uh, I am using right now an aluminum oxide stone. This is a King 1000, 6000 grit stone, which if you have a water stone, then you'll need a water trough to soak it in unless it's a splash and go stone. And I find that with this dual grit edge, my original dual grit edge, I find that it helps to have a stone that has a somewhat soft or forgiving clay or binder in it. These king stones are very soft. I don't always like the edge that they leave by themselves, but for dual grit, that gentleness and the way that the binder wants to give and it's a bit softer and it kind of wants to break away, it aids in you removing damaged metal without removing that keen apex extension that you're building with a dual grit edge. So that's of note. For stropping, you need a piece of jeans. I literally cut a leg off of some jeans and some Mother's Mag polish is what I'm using right now. I'm about to test a bunch of other stropping materials, which brings up the fact that I'm not entirely sure 
that this is fully optimized. Like we could potentially get more performance out of MagnaCut than even the edge test of the blade that I sent to Pete. I don't know, but this is the best results I've got so far and this is what I'm currently doing for dual grip. I also use a block of wood for the jeans to build a little flat strop. I'll explain that more in detail when we get to that step. You can also, I would recommend, using a block of some kind to isolate your angle. I've got a video on how to simply find and make for almost free, you know, the cost of a wood scrap if you have a chop saw, some angle guides. If you're gonna get them wet, you probably wanna soak them in water so they don't flex and bend and get your angle off. That video is, is here, I'll put a link to that there. So if you wanna build some simple hand angle guides without putting a ton of thought into it that are very effective, check out that video. And that's it, that's all you need to build this edge. edge. Now, I've already reprofiled this to 17 degrees. I'll have to come out with a video soon because I figured out mathematically how to calculate the grind angle so that you can set this against, you can set the grind against the angle guide and it matches up with much more precision to the actual edge angle you're creating. I'll have to make a video about that soon. Basically, you just measure the spine, take half of that measurement in millimeters, and then you measure the, grind, the height of the grind, and then divide half of the spine width by the grind height in millimeters, and then on a scientific calculator, you push the second button, and then the sine minus one, the inverse sine, that will give you the angle that your grind is set at. And that's the amount um, that it'll, it'll be pushed off the stone to center that angle. Anyway, I should make a video about it, not right now. <laughs> So today I'm gonna shoot this video, I'm gonna get it all set up and I'm gonna shoot it somewhat continuous and like a full length sharpening video because people seem to be interested in that. If you want me to clip and make it into a shorter, just like step by step, do this, do this, do this, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, let's get into this sharpening. So this Hogue Deca has been reprofiled to 17 degrees per side and I did that on a 600 grit diamond stone. It's slicing paper nicely right now. I'm not gonna do this from dull. If you want me to make a video on how I reprofile by hand, then let me know in the comments. But it's, it's doing well. It might, may be even push cutting. Yeah, like a slightly messy push cut, but it's pretty good. The best on this right now, let's find out. So the best on this right now is at 193. And it's a beautiful day for sharpening here in New Zealand. Good to be back. Okay, the first stone you'll sharpen with will be your coarse diamond stone. Get your blade set on the angle guide and then position your body so that you can easily transfer up without changing that angle and set it to the stone. Get the feel of that. And then you're simply going to raise a burr that you're confident is there on each side. I'm gonna start on this side. Depending on how confident you are that you're holding the same angle, you can return to the guide each stroke or every three strokes or five strokes if you feel pretty confident that you are getting it and you can feel the flat of that edge is actually against the stone. <clears throat> it's important to note, in lieu of the information that we've learned from Todd Simpson and the Science of Sharp, that for the dual grit sharpening method, it's probably very important that you do this particular kind of edge with only edge trailing strokes. Okay, I'm feeling a, a good burr there already because I've already profiled to this 17 degree angle. Actually, this 
grind is at about four degrees, so this is a 13 degree guide, making the edge a 17 degree angle. Again, check out that video if you want more info on that. So I'm gonna switch sides. It doesn't have to be a massive, massive burr. In fact, the smaller it is, the more you can be confident there's not lots and lots of damaged metal created at the apex, but you want to be confident that it's there. So you do want to put in your time on this step. There's a little bit of a burr, but I'd like to be a little bit more confident, so I'm going to give it probably like three more strokes. If your profiling is already done, then it makes the actual sharpening job a breeze. Okay, I am confident that that stone, or that <clears throat> side of the edge has got a burr. So I'm gonna move this one closer to me because I'm gonna return on the back side to doing strokes on this each time. But I'm gonna set up in front of it, make sure it's evenly spaced so you can reach them both easily. I'm gonna set up the 1000 grit, we'll do the 1000, the red side of this kingstone, first. I don't usually use a nagura for this method, just the stone itself. So I've currently got a burr on, on that side, so I'm going to switch to the kingstone and flip a smaller 1000 grit burr on the side that's facing me. What would that be? We'll call it the uh, the port side, right? Port and starboard. You ships guys out there. Uh, with these water stones as well, you, you can go, I would go pretty gentle with your strokes because you're trying to, you're trying to take advantage of how malleable that metal is. And, and pull what you've already sharpened to the apex without damaging it. So you want to do fairly gentle strokes, but you want to be confident again that you've actually put that burr on the other side of the edge. I'm not feeling enough of it yet, so we're going to do several more strokes. Once you are confident, I wouldn't recommend going on and on because it does kind of matter how many times you flip the burr back and forth, and it does kind of matter that you not create too much damaged metal to have to clean up on the strop, because the strop, as I'm finding out, is really part of the key to this whole dual grit sharpening method. I'm very confident in that, but it's not too big. So we're gonna come back to the 250 grit stone and really gently push that burr back break off the parts of it that are fragile. You want to just be using the angle that you've just built from muscle memory and just sliding with the weight of the knife across the core stone at this point. It's very easy to overly damage it. But it's also, if you're paying attention, it's not hard not to. I don't want to I, I hear guys all the time and they're like, oh, it's, I know that there it's possible to find sharpening ways like dual grit method that extend the edge life, but I'm just not into putting that much effort in. And I, I want to emphasize, like, that's fine. Like, if you're not into it, that's totally fine. But I do want to emphasize that once, if you just get used to this, if you know how to feel when there's a burr there, it's not really very hard to sharpen dual grit. I find it to be easier, in fact, because it's basically like making a coarse edge. And then you refine one side of the edge just the way you would normally. It's actually less work, in, in my mind, than a fine edge because you're not hitting both sides. <clears throat> anyway, that's arguable. We don't need to get into semantics. I've just removed the burr without flipping it too hard to the other side, so I'm switching to my king. 6,000 grit stone, which is feeling actually really nice because I just flattened it with a Nagura that I got when I was in the States. Got some fun new stones to try out. I'll be Victorinox testing them first, but uh, really excited to share some results with you guys and then 
we're gonna try some more combinations. I've been so enjoying trying different combinations of dual grit edges, and I'm excited to like sort of sound out what we've got performance-wise in all the different stones in my collection. It'll be really fun. Okay, I've got a small but definitely identifiable burr. I've actually like a little more in the middle where the pressure gets spread out. That feels good. So I've got a small but identifiable burr from the Kingstone. So back to your coarse stone. Make sure with this that um, you are not lifting the angle at any time, or at least you're being very consistent. I find that with hand sharpening, I prefer sort of a body pivot, kind of like this, or some version of that, over using any wrist action. If you're talented enough to do like ambidextrous, go for it. I'm just not that talented, to be honest. Um, all right, let's check that. Okay, that's definitely flipped the burr back. Now, at this point, you want to be real gentle, and you want to do this as few times as possible, but you've got to get that burr aligned so that you can't feel it anymore, okay? So, it, the, the, the burr has now been flipped back to the 6,000 grit side, so you want to go ultra gentle, and you want to feel each time. And as soon as that burr is gone, Almost all gone there. I'll do a little bit more there. Once it's all gone there, yep, then you want to come back to the coarse stone. And this is like cover as little stone as you can manage with this. You're not trying to grind a new edge into it. You're trying to get rid of any burr that got folded over or at least align it. So very gentle, very short stroke, very careful to maintain angle and that's almost gone. And then I, I would recommend, this is actually feeling pretty darn good already. It's feeling very good already. But I'd recommend doing your last stroke on your fine stone and doing it like just an absolute ghost pass um, to get that edge alignment on point. Okay, I cannot feel burr on either side. Oh, actually, we got a little problem out there at the tip. I don't think I got all the way there. That's good, okay. I can't feel burr on either side, so I'm gonna go through and reset up. Now I gotta redo that thing I redid. Oh. Yeah, that's good. So I'm gonna reset up with a strop and I'll explain to you what the deal is with my stropping at the moment. But that is the sharpening portion, done in real time. There you go. Now, as with any stropping job, stropping can be a really important step. There's certain stones I'm learning that can return quite a good edge without any stropping. But what I'm also learning is that a lot of us, and I'm learning this a bit through, through Bess and a bit through reading a book by Vadim Krychuk, a lot of us don't deburr until the point of fully there's no damaged metal and you've just got that clean apex there. Most of us have different methods for managing burr and aggression, but it's, it's very rare to have someone that deburrs 100%. And when Vadim would make videos for knife grinders, he would, you know, sharpen his knife at 15 degrees and get it down to like 26 best and push cut through <laughs> a 40 millimeter hanging manila rope without swinging his arm. And it's just like crazy. Oh my gosh, a fully deburred edge is insane. So I'm not there yet, but I'm actually like, learning and growing a lot in this area. So I'll say the stropping is actually a very important component of dual grit sharpening. It turns out that the reason why is because when you have that edge and the core stone pushes a lot of metal over in a burr, now the fine stone pushes that back to center and it cuts off some of that damaged metal, but some of the metal around the apex is sticking up in a sort of extension. It's got rough texture across the edge 
but looking down the edge, it's actually like protruding at a more acute angle than the rest of the edge. It's a mix of some probably, possibly, work-hardened steel that's very, very good functional cutting steel that's been bent but not broken, and some steel that has been plastically deformed or undergone plastic deformation that needs to be cleaned up. So don't be scared off. I'm going to explain to you how I get rid of the bad steel while leaving most of the good steel. But just to get it in your frame of mind, this is a really important step. Now, the way that I have come to manage this is by setting up my stropping setup in such a way that it only works if I apply light pressure. And I'll show you that now. My best results that I'm getting right now have been on denim. I got the idea to start using denim from an article on the Science of Sharp about straight razor honing and stropping, where Todd Simpson had very good results with like full deburring from denim. The way that I'm doing this right now is I'm taking the wood block and setting it inside this pant leg of jeans. I know this is so funny. My first video, I'm like stropping with cardboard and you guys are like, what in the world? And now I'm like onto blue jeans and you're probably still like, what in the world is Cave doing? <laughs> okay, so you can see in this camera that I have kind of pushed it so that there's a flat surface made from the wood of jeans and then I've got a little bit of extra on each side. And what I've been doing is taking some of the stones, I'm using the spider coat ultra fine because it's got little grippers and because it's not wet like the water stone, but whatever stones you have, you can use. And setting them up kind of so they catch into that fabric and pull it tight. And then I'll do the same thing with my easy lap coarse stone, sandwich it on the side and push it down. Now why? Why am I doing this? Okay, the reason why is because they're held at tension, but they're not actually fixed in place. So if I push too hard with this knife, it will actually pull the jeans up and I'll have to stop the stroke. Now that is actually on purpose because I must, must, must keep my pressure light to get all of the best out of a dual grit edge. So I'm forcing myself with a, with a method that if I push too hard, it will give and I'll have to start over so that I physically cannot. The reason why I do that mainly is because I learned on Japanese water stones and you have to push quite hard to, to reprofile a knife. So I learned to push hard and it was actually ruining my stropping. Those of you who learned on Japanese water stones, this will drive you nuts, okay? But if you're gonna sharpen dual grit, this will make you a better sharpener. So that's my plug for that. Taking a little bit of Mother's Mag and aluminum polish, and I'm just gonna make a line of it on here. I'm not gonna cover the whole surface actually. I've found that the big risk with stropping is not that you don't strop enough. It is often rounding and overstropping. And one of the ways that I mitigate that is by loading a very narrow area of compound. And when the flat of the edge is on there, um, the flat of the edge is spreading out the pressure. Kind of want to rub it in so there's not just goop that goops up on your knife because that's annoying and counterproductive. So there we go. Got that. The flat of the knife spreads out the pressure and you have one small area that you're working at a time which makes it easier to slow the speed of deburring, if you will. So you get your angle guide ready and get your angle set. Now, when you're stropping, as you're pulling through, if you feel like it's grabbing, it's because that edge angle is tilted up and you're hitting the apex, okay? So if you hear that or feel that scrape, that that's a bit high, okay? You can do that maybe for one light stroke with a dual grip method. If you do it for more than that, it's going to take the aggression off of the edge. So you actually want to find that angle with feel it in your hands where it, it is almost feeling that scratchy grab of the apex and then back off of it a little bit. Maximum one light stroke of feeling that scratchy 
ness, and then I know that's a weird way to communicate it, and then back the angle down a little bit till it feels totally smooth, and do all the rest of your strokes on the totally smooth angle. The reason why is because that apex extension, if you're up and riding on it, it will pull it off. Um, and it will it will ruin the boost in longevity that you get and, and aggression that you get from a dual grit edge. So you want to get good at finding where that apex rubbing angle is. And you want to put a little tiny bit of stropping onto that apex. And then you want to back off and do the rest of it on the smooth. Okay, I have been doing five strokes. So I'm going to try to do what I've just described to you myself. I'm pulling the knife up. Oh, there I feel it. It's a little scratchy there. So that's my one stroke for that side. Now I got to remember that angle. And then pulling it up there. I feel it. That's a little bit scratchy there. Okay. And that essentially is my one stroke. You can see I've already bubbled the jeans a little bit. So that was almost too hard. And this is why I do this. Okay. Um, Okay, so the rest, I usually have been doing five strokes, so I'm going to back off that angle till I feel total smoothness and do the, re the other four strokes with total smoothness. You shouldn't be able to hear much of the edge scraping. It should glide, especially if you have a wide edge bevel. You're going very light here, not like excessively light. You do need a little bit of deburr deburring. You do need the give of those jeans to wrap around the apex a tiny bit because you need to remove that damaged metal. This is how dual grit works. It's like harnessing the bend of the metal without it destroying the edge or weakening it or whatever. Oh, how many is that? That was two, right? I think that's three. Oh, that was almost too high. Hopefully it didn't ruin it. When, when you're not talking and trying to make a video, this is actually not as hard as I'm making it sound. There we go. That was good. I think one more. We'll just go one more because I, I don't know. But anyway, this is real life. I'm not that precise of a person, to be honest. And you don't have to be that precise of a person to get record-breaking performance out of your knives. I mean, that magnet cut I sharpened, it outcut a test at the same angle of Rex 121. And I'm not saying... There was no other factors at play. There probably were. But um, you can get good performance hand sharpening as a normal person. This is what I'm trying to say. This is like part of the point of my whole channel. Anyway, I think that edge is done. You'll want to feel it for burr because there may be in your stroke some errors. In fact, there's a little bit of an error in mine. And in this part, on this edge, I've still got a little too much burr. So I'm going to have to revisit that stone and hopefully, hopefully we're doing okay. So being able to feel and identify a burr is still very valid and important, especially for your lower Rockwell steels. Like this is 61 Rockwell, and it's actually taking a little bit more work and feeling the edge to deburr it than the Spyderco Mule did. If you've still got a bit of burr, it may be an indication that you didn't go high enough in your angle. You laid off that too much, but it's okay. It's better to do that and not even touch the apex than it is to overdo it and remove all of that aggression. So had actually a fairly significant problem there to fix. And now I'm going to come back to the other side and just give it one really good gentle stroke and then we'll retest the best and paper slicing and see how we did and that's all I did okay so sent did did this sent that particular knife off the way that that one deburred it went down to 114 best I, here's a picture that I took right after sharpening that one before I sent it to Pete and we'll see what we got to on this uh, DECA. It's a little bit harder to deburr, so surprised if we're a little higher on the best, but I hope for good things. Let me, I'll set up the best now so you know I didn't do anything else to the knife. Oh, you see the number there on the phone? Yeah, okay, so let's check this out. 
Okay. Test the same portion of edge by lining up the sharpening groove where it was. Oh, we didn't touch yet. Yeah, we got problems. Best machines are very sensitive, but that's because they're pretty precise if you use them right, so that's cool. Oh, 118. 118, so that's very, very comparable, very comparable to the edge that was sent to Pete. The edge that was sent to Pete was 114. So let's do a little paper slicing. I mean, you're just, you're just not gonna have any problems with a paper slicer. This stuff will fall through paper just about. You can curl some paper. I mean, yeah, it's, it's real sharp. Uh, what else is hard? Um, let's roll this paper and see if we can initiate a cut on one, on the flat on one layer of paper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty cool. Uh, let me go get some, um, some paper towel. Okay, paper towel. Let's see. Very hard to one hand cut paper towel. Oh yeah, but we're good. Look at that. Guys, I love this edge. <laughs> it's just so good. It just keeps cutting. I mean, are you seeing this? It's totally folded over and I'm cutting against the flat of the paper towel. Did you see that? Look how clean that is. Unreal. Unreal. Um, this will pull cut paper towel like you're unzipping a zipper. It's just, it's just a great edge. It's so good. Oh, what else is worth noting? Uh, I should use this moment because a lot of people are probably going to watch this compared to some of my videos. Um, to tell you that with my more optimized stropping protocol, it actually will shave both ways in contrast to my first um, dual grade edges. So you can see there that that's shaving very easily in one direction, but if you reverse the direction, it shaves equally easily. Um, so you can see very little difference there. Hopefully you can see. Sorry, my hair's everywhere. So um, anyway, it's it's uh, more balanced now. My dual grid edges are, and I think more durable. I think that's one of the reasons why they're lasting better on Pete's videos. Um, my, my wife's not around, but I'll see if I can find a hair to see if we can whittle. I don't know if this one will whittle hair. I don't always check. Something else I should mention is that <clears throat> if you're willing to trade off a tiny bit sometimes a tiny bit of the aggression, for a little bit more smoothness, you can actually control that by whether you go to a hanging or flat leather strop after. I don't presently use diamond compounds on my dual grit edges. I find that it's easy to break down the edge, but this is an unloaded kangaroo tail strop. And I usually am willing to budge and give, you know, 5-10% of the aggression up for a little bit more smoothness. So I'm going to give this a couple of gentle strokes, laying the blade all the way down on the rue leather. And then letting the leather just curl slightly from the, the weight of the knife to get that apex. Give it maybe three or four. If you use unloaded leather, it's hard to hurt the edge you basically mainly only make it better. The only thing that can happen is if you use a really tough leather like kangaroo, you can lose a tiny bit of that aggression because it does do some level of stripping or deburring. So I'm happy with that. Just wanted to demonstrate if possible that it, it is now whittling a hair. It, it pulled that curl off anyway. Um, oh, it just tree topped it people ask me to do with my edges. Slow, cursive cuts. So, obviously not the easiest.
If you want to see my recent test where I did my normal Victorinox testing, where I'm testing steel with very low alloy to analyze the effects of different sharpening stones, what they have on the steel matrix or the steel itself. Recently, I had a phenomenal result of dual grit using a Spyderco Ultra Fine Ceramic that cut twice as long as any of the fine edges I've ever tested and even cut longer than this method in, in that soft steel in that particular test. That test is here. For all the rest of you, I say peace out from the home slice. Take care, guys. Have a good one.